Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. Hi, this video is about accounting for accrued and prepaid expenses. The accruals or matching basis of accounting. This is accountants secret sauce. This is the thing that makes financial statements prepared by accountants different from just a list of cash receipts and cash uh, payments. Because accrual accounting depicts transactions or events when they occur, not when they're received or paid in cash. So in the last video, we saw that for sales and purchases, if sales and purchases are in credit, then we record them when they happen, not when we either receive the cash from the sale or pay for the purchases. And this accruals principle also um, applies to um, expenses uh, and costs. And we can have a situation where we have paid for something in advance, um, in which case we say we have a prepayment uh, uh, and we record um, the expense when the expense happens, not when the payment happens. Or maybe the easier one to understand is an accrual where we use up some service and uh, we have to pay for that service after we've used it up. Uh, so we say we accrue for the cost of uh, that uh, service. So accrual is a little bit of a confusing term. Uh, sometimes we're talking about the accrual's basis of accounting and then there is a thing called a, an accrual which is in the balance sheet where we show a liability for services that we have um, uh, used up but not paid for yet. So accounting for expenses. Well we know from previous videos that uh, expenses are debits. They are um, on the debit side of the trial balance. So supposing we have wages, a wage expense. Well, uh, in that case, we debit wages. We know that. That's the expense side. Um, if we pay for those wages immediately in cash, then we credit bank. So we reduce the bank account. If we um, have not paid for them straight away. We've just told the people that, you know, we, we, we have used up the people's services, but we haven't paid the wages yet. Then we are going to credit accruals or maybe something called a wage accrual. Okay. This is going to end up as a liability in our balance sheet. And what it represents is that we owe something to uh, the people who have uh, worked for us. So let's look at an example of an accrual and uh, let's look at the uh, Scon Limited, the company. They had rented premises on the 1st of January 20X1. On the 31st of December 20X1, the date of its balance sheet, it had not made any rent payments, so it owed all its rent. The rent for the year was a thousand euro. Well, I don't know where they got that. Um, uh, in order to record this transaction, a liability for the rent due must be created. Okay. So let's look at, at the financial statements for SCON and see how they change when you're talking about uh, this accrual. And uh, this here, this part up here, this is the statement of financial position, just to be clear, down as far as there. And this is the income statement. So both things are going to change and we're going to need to keep aware of uh, what the changes are and how they balance out. So we reach the end of the year 
we have not paid any rent so there's nothing gone out of the bank there's no transaction recorded but we know that we haven't paid any rent and that we have to show some rent as an expense for the year in our income statement so down here in our income statement we have our rent expense and that's a debit as usual for expenses um, so that's going to increase our expenses and the other side of that transaction is to create a liability accruals rent due 1000 okay so what has this done to our balance sheet well we now have a thousand of extra liabilities and we have a thousand of extra costs this is reducing our profit by a thousand so the 2700 of profit has now gone down to 1700 and that filters through to our retained income which is 8700 and um, everything balances again okay and nothing has happened to the asset side here nothing has happened at all to the asset side uh, and the two changes on the liabilities and equity side balance out this goes down by a thousand and these liabilities go up by a thousand so this is an example of an accrual where we have used up some service and uh, we uh, um, need to recognize that fact uh, that there's a cost associated with that service and we owe that cost at the end of the accounting period. And the journal entry for the rent accrual is uh, to debit the rent expense in the income statement and credit rent accrual in the balance sheet. Now there's the other side of this as well. Sometimes we pay for things in advance. One of the classic um, uh, examples of this is the insurance uh, payments where we um, pay our insurance for a whole year, but that not, might not be lined up with the accounting year. So supposing we pay our insurance uh, at the end of March uh, for the full year until um, uh, the end of um, uh, March the next year um, so uh, what you've got there is you've got nine months of the insurance payment that do relate to this accounting period but you've three months um, that relate to the next accounting period and they should be shown as a cost in the next accounting period so the way we do this is we create an asset for the bit of the service that we have paid for but have not used up yet at the at the, the the date of the financial statements when the services are paid for so let's say we we pay some kind of expense we debit the expense and we credit the bank remember we're paying in advance here so the actual cash is flowing out in advance of uh, of of us doing anything here at the end of the accounting period the amount of the service not used up is recorded as a prepayment so we work out how much of the service we haven't used at the uh, balance sheet date essentially and we debit um, an asset account called a prepayment that represents the amount of service we have not used up and we credit the expense and what does that do that reduces the expense so supposing we paid insurance of you know um, a thousand and 300 was related to the next accounting year well we would have originally recorded an expense of a thousand and taken a thousand out of the bank when we paid it now we reduce the expense by 300 down to 700 to show that um, only 700 of the expense related to that accounting year and the prepayment will essentially shift that expense into the next accounting year. So suppose that Scon Limited paid insurance of 500 in December 20X1. The insurance cover uh, payment will provide cover from uh, 1st of July 20X1 to 30th of June 20X2. Um, and our, our year end 
is uh, December 20x1, 31 December 20x1. This means that half of this payment relates, relates to insurance services that will be received in the following accounting period. That's 20x2. So originally, when we make the payment in December, before the year end, we put the full amount through. We debit insurance expense with 500 and we credit the bank with 500. That's what we got to do. We got to credit the bank because the money's gone out of the bank and we have to debit something. So we debit insurance expense. Um, uh, so that's the first. So let's look at how this works out for SCON uh, Limited. Now this, uh, this as before, this is the statement of um, financial position or the balance sheet, and this is the income statement down here. Um, this column here is after the insurance payment, and how do we know that? Well, uh, we can see here that there's an insurance expense of 500. Now remember the insurance expense was for a full 12 months and we've only used up half of it so what we need to do now is we need to alter the accounts for the insurance prepayment and we do that in this column we create a prepay a prepayment asset so that's 250 debit up here prepayment of insurance and down here the insurance expense is credited with 250. now remember an expense is usually a debit item so this 500 expense uh, that we would have had originally, that would have been 500 debit. So the 250 credit offsets that 500 debit and we end up with an insurance expense of 250. This increases our profit by 250, um, uh, bring it up to 1450. Um, and when we add up the retained earnings, uh, then everything works out in the balance sheet and it balances, um, including this 250 asset here for insurance prepaid. Okay, so that's an example of how an insurance prepayment uh, uh, works. So transactions are, are recognized when they occur rather than when they are received or paid in cash. Fine. Expenses are recorded as expenses in the income statement and a decrease in bank if they're paid in cash or an increase in accruals which is a liability if they haven't been paid for yet okay so the expense is always going to be debit to the expense and then we're going to either credit the bank or credit you know wages accrual or electricity accrual or whatever only expenses of the accounting period should be shown in the income statement. Create accruals or prepayments at the end of the accounting period to deal with this. So um, if we have um, uh, expenses that we have paid for in advance, um, then we've got to deal with them as well and create assets for the bit of the service that we haven't used up yet and decrease the expense at the end of the accounting period. And this is a process that accountants go through at the end of the period, looking for accruals and making adjustments uh, for them. Okay, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Bye.